Hi, GameSpot readers and viewers. It's Kevin Van Ord here. I'm sitting with Giancarlo Veronini, and we are about to take a look um, right, at Assassin's Creed well, 4 Black, Black Flag, Flag the debut trailer. So, as you can probably already captain, tell, Kevin, Assassin's Creed 4 is a game about splendor. pirates. Yeah, and that is a delicious looking beard that guy's got there. So, and that is actually Blackbeard, the guy that you just saw. I'm gonna stop it for a second. That right. was Blackbeard that you saw. So, Assassin's Creed 4 is actually going to focus on real pirates, real historical pirate situations, much like previous Assassin's Creed games focus on their historical situations. Assassin's Creed 4 is the same exact thing. And the guy that you're looking at now is Edward Kenway, and you might recognize that last name. Whoa, Edward Kenway. That Edward seems Kenway. familiar, that name. So, he is the father of Haytham and the grandfather of Connor. Right. So, this tells his story, and they basically want to let you know that Edward is basically this guy who came from really poor British stock. Um, and he had a lot of struggles uh, as, he, as he grew up. Um, but they really kind of want to tell the story of that family and kind of... I think they sort of alluded to the fact that they kind of want to tell how Haytham ended up the way that he did and, you know, kind of allude to his relationship with Connor later on that happens right. in AC3 and all that kind of stuff. Well, it's so. interesting because Haytham was hardly working class. He hardly seemed to have to fight for anything. Right. So it should be interesting to see how that goes, especially um, given this this guy here, if he's, if he's truly an assassin, how you know, Haytham's situation actually came about. Correct, because there's so. there's a bit of a thing there if you've played Assassin's Creed. There is. Creed I don't want to give anything away, no. but so let's just say there's a thing. Alright, let's let's get this started again. There's Edward. The As you see the Assassin's Creed logo with the skull underneath. Right. Which would make him an assassin, right? If he's yeah. flying under that flag. And I would assume that looking at this too, if, if this is uh, indeed Black Flag and it's pirates, there's going to be a major focus on the naval aspect. Right, so I'm going to saw in Assassin's Creed 3. I'm going to stop it there. So Good timing. Naval combat, huge in Assassin's Creed 4. So there's a couple of things that we need to talk about. One, that okay. the world itself is more open world. So imagine that you're, you're given this boat, and actually your boat is actually kind of your new Assassin's Creed base. So really? Edward, Edward has a boat called the Jack Daw. And the jackdaw is what he uses to basically go around the Caribbean, which is the setting for this, obviously. And Cuba is kind of at the center. Um, so the jackdaw can be upgraded over the course of the game. And it sounds like it can be upgraded in the same way that you used to upgrade your, your the homestead in AC3 or, or the previous bases in other Assassin's Creed games. So you can upgrade cannons and do all the other stuff. But it's, it's the naval combat stuff in 3 taken to an extreme. And they've tried to really improve it and put more control in your hands. It sounds like they really want to make it sort of this living, breathing world uh, where there's always something going on no matter what, uh, well, no matter what it is you're doing at any sort of given time. So, um, and they really, really wanted to play up the fact that it's totally seamless. No loading, no nothing. That's what they want to do here. There's no loading like when you basically want to go into port, you just get off the boat. Like there's no loading screen, no nothing. You just get off, walk on the island, and that's it. Well, you can see he's using all kinds of kind of the traditional weapons that we've we've kind of seen in Assassin's Creed games. So we've got some swords, some firearms. Did they say whether or not firearms were going to take on a different kind of role, or were they be supplementary as as before? They did not. And I'm going to stop the video there because there's two bits there. They, they sure. didn't really talk about firearms. They did just talk about that you know you will have access to kind of a, a wide array of stuff that you can use over the course of the game. I actually want to wind things back just a little bit. So um, this part may not seem all that significant. The, the underwater see, piece we see here. Right, so there's underwater parts in Assassin's Creed 4 um, that you can actually go underwater and salvage wrecks. Um, and kind of the cool thing is that you do this basically to get treasure because that's kind of the whole point of being right. a pirate. And you'll, as you play the game, you'll learn about wrecks and various other parts that are scattered all over the game world. And it sounds like, and what's kind of interesting is they want to make the side stuff in Assassin's Creed 4 interesting. They want you to do it because it's fun, not just because it's there. And, act and actually, they've enlisted the help of the Far Cry 3 team um, to actually help them design these side missions and things like that that kind of blend better into the overall world and kind of take you around the world so that if you do have a main mission that you don't necessarily get to it right away because you have these fun um, and interesting side objectives to, to take care of. way around every crag and crevice of these islands. 
so there's that. Whoa, two for the price of one. Yeah. And Captain Edward Kenway's your man. Only don't meddle in his private affairs. For there's more mystery to that man than even I he dare looking ask. Right at you. So this is actually kind of interesting too, and I'll pause it in a second here. See what happens? All that you just had a bad day. So, in terms of assassin, actual assassinations that happened in four, one of the things they said was that they want to mimic the assassinations of Assassin's Creed One, where it's basically like, here's a guy, here's a target. There's going to be a situation surrounding that target. Just figure it out. Um, and so they want to take the assassinations of one, they want to take the movement of two, um, and then they kind of want to blend that into this whole sort of open world nature that they're trying to aim for before. Um, it is definitely them trying to do a greatest hits version of Assassin's Creed, I guess, for Assassin's Creed 4, which I found to be um, pretty interesting. And actually that brings us to my next point, uh -huh. which is the present day stuff. Right, so you talked about Animus Walls, but what is the role of Animus and what the hell has happened with Desmond? So they would not go into great depth about this, they but they said do. you do not continue, um, you obviously do not continue as Desmond for various reasons. Sure. Um, you play as you. Me? As you. in Kevin? Um, so when I asked them if that meant like, does that mean I can create myself and put myself in the game? Um, they kind of just said, well, you can take that to sort of mean that, yes, there might be some sort of customization options that reflect what I'm talking about. Um, but they wouldn't just come out and say that. Right. Um, but you're this person who basically goes to this place called Abstergo Entertainment. And it's this company that does entertainment research, and that's what they use the Animus for. Um, so they go back to different periods and do quote-unquote entertainment research. And um, that's kind of the extent of, of what they would say, so that that's how they kind of explain how Desmond does not exist in that particular, um, or that, <laughs> I'm not sure how to phrase that exactly, <laughs> but that's, that's how the setup is a little bit different. Um, I mean, this sounds more like, uh, in terms of the present day stuff, this al that almost sounds like more of a sidestepping, this is almost more of a, a side project um, in, in that sense, and it's not really, it doesn't sound like it's continuing the core story that was left off with Assassin's Creed 3. No, and it actually, in some ways, it's interesting that, you know, they it's not Desmond because you are still playing as an, ostensibly as an ancestor. Right. Um, so I'll be curious to see how this game explains that. I mean, I would have to be, um, Des like, I would have to be related to Desmond, right? Correct. For this to work. Correct. So. So maybe it's just that we're all related to Desmond. That would be creepy. One degree of separation. Yes. So that, that I think that just about does it. Um, that is the look at the Assassin's Creed 4 debut trailer. Well, thanks for showing it to me. Thanks for showing it to everybody else. And uh, this is the first I'm seeing this, so yes. I'm really looking forward to what will happen come October 29th. And be sure to check out GameSpot.com for additional coverage of Assassin's Creed 4. Hurrah. <laughs>